In this Double One Game Creator video tutorial series, we'll be going over the basics of using the engine, from detailing what each of the main editors do, to learning how to create your very first game with NPCs and quests. In this fifth part, we'll be looking at creating interactable NPCs. Specifically, we'll be taking a look at the built-in quest-giving NPCs and learning how a collection quest works. Now that we're familiar with the basics of the script editor and we know how to place actors on a map, the next step is to combine these two together to create NPCs or non-playable characters that the player can interact with. To do this, we'll first create a new actor and then look at the triggers section in the top right of the actor editor. There are many different actor triggers to choose from, each of which provides a different type of interaction. You can add new triggers to your actors by clicking the add button. This will open the add trigger window, which shows all of the available triggers for the actor. Feel free to experiment and tinker with each of these triggers to create various actor interactions. For this video tutorial, we'll be using the talk to slash activated trigger, which will run whenever the action key, the enter key by default, is pressed. Double click this trigger to open the script editor. To create a basic interaction with our NPC, we can add a message box event to make the actor say something when we interact with them. To do this, double click the message box event from the quick access event list to the right of the script editor, and then type an appropriate message you want to display to the player. Then click OK for both the script editor and the actor editor to place the actor on the map. Select the play map icon on the map editor toolbar and click on an area near the actor we just created. Click OK on the testing options window that pops up and then approach the NPC using the WASD or arrow keys and press the action key to bring up the message box we just scripted. To step things up a bit, we'll now take a look at what a condition is and how they're used when making our games. While scripting in Double One Game Creator, you'll use conditions to check if a script should run or not. The Action RPG template provides us with some example NPCs that we can look at to learn how to use conditions in scripting. To begin, place an actor on your map and then select the Collection Quest Actor template located inside the Actor Character NPC folder. Then double click its Talk To slash Activated Trigger to open the script editor. This script contains a local variable which we can see by clicking the Edit Local Variables button in the bottom left of the script editor. Variables are a method of storing data in your game, such as in this example, where it's storing the quest's completion state. A variable consists of two parts, a name and a value. To get the value of a variable while scripting, you call or reference its name. Variables also have different scopes, these being global or local. You can retrieve the contents of a global variable anywhere within your game, whereas the contents of a local variable can only be accessed from within the script it was created in. Local variables also have an option called persistent. If left unticked, the contents of the variable will reset once the script ends. However, if ticked, the value will be saved after the script finishes. In the case of the Collection Quest NPC, we'll be using the local variable named Finished Quest to check if the player has completed the quest if the value is 1, or not if the value is 0. The NPC will request the player to gather 10 herbs for them. If the player collects 10 herbs, they will be rewarded with $50. As this script is more complicated than anything we've tackled so far, we'll be breaking down each step to show how the logic of this script works. We start with the Once Branch event. This event will take the left branch the first time the script is ran, and the right branch every other time the script runs. Since this is the first time the script has been run, we take the left branch. Next is a message box event. This will tell the player to collect 10 herbs. After that, we have a variable operation event. This will set the finished quest local variable to zero, meaning the quest has not been completed yet. At this point, the script ends. There are now two options the player can take. They can gather the requested 10 herbs and talk to the NPC again, or they can talk to the NPC without gathering the 10 herbs. Let's assume the player hasn't yet collected all of the 10 herbs, but decides to talk to the NPC anyway. In this instance, finished quest will still equal zero. We start with the once branch event. Since the once branch has already run once, we take the right branch this time. Next is a comparison branch event, which checks to see if finished quest is equal to one. If this statement is true, it'll take the left branch. If false, it'll take the right branch. Since finished quest is still zero, we take the right branch. If you're ever unsure what conditions need to be met for a branch to be taken, you can hover your mouse cursor over the branch. Next is a held item branch event, which checks to see if the player has 10 herbs in their inventory. 
If the player has 10 or more herbs, it'll take the left branch. If the player has less than 10 herbs, it'll take the right branch. Since we currently have no herbs, we take the right branch. After that, we have a message box event. This will inform the player that they haven't collected 10 herbs yet. At this point, the script ends. If the player talks with the NPC again without gathering 10 herbs, the same script will repeat. Let's now assume the player has collected 10 herbs and step through the script again. In this instance, finish quest will still equal zero, but the player has 10 of the herb item in their inventory. We start with the once branch event. Since the once branch has already run once, we take the right branch. Next is the comparison branch event, which checks the state of the finished quest local variable. Since it's still equal to zero, we take the right branch. After that is the item held branch event, which checks to see if the player has 10 of the herb item. We do, so we take the left branch. Next is a message box event that thanks the player for collecting 10 herbs and informs them that they'll receive a reward for completing the quest. After that is an add remove item event, which removes the 10 herbs from the player's inventory. This is then followed by a change money event, which awards the player with $50. Finally, we finish with a variable operation event, which sets the value of the finished quest local variable to 1 to signal that the quest has been completed. Since this is a persistent local variable, the value will be saved once the script ends. This marks the end of the quest. The player can, however, talk to the NPC once more, but the script is set up in such a way that the player is unable to repeat the quest or claim their reward a second time. In this instance, finished quest will be equal to 1. We start with the once branch event. Since the once branch has already run once, we take the right branch. Next is the comparison branch event, which checks to see if finished quest is equal to 1, which it now is. This is followed by a message box event that thanks the player again for collecting the 10 herbs. At this point the script ends. This is the final possible instance of this script, as we have now covered every possibility. If you're having trouble following which paths your script is taking, you can tick the break into the script debugger when event is reached checkbox on any event. This will bring up the script debugger at runtime, which allows you to step through your script one event at a time. Comparison branches and other branch events are a crucial tool to creating engaging games for your players. It's important to become familiar with them and understand how they work so that you can create more engaging gameplay experiences. This concludes the fifth part of our video tutorial series detailing the basics of Double One Game Creator. In the final part of this series, we'll be looking at players, controls, and inputs, learning how to modify the main playable character and their party, as well as taking a look at controls and input triggers, which are needed for players to be able to interact with your game.